Good day everyone. Uh, in this episode, it is a big honor for us to have as our guest a registered nurse who is practicing in the United States right now, though she has Filipino roots and uh, she's now based in New Jersey and New York in the U.S. She has been a registered professional nurse in those states in the U.S. for quite some time already. And she currently is working as a staff nurse in the New York City Health Center. She is no other than Marigold Alingdan. May I call you Goldie, ma'am? Yes, of course. You can call me Goldie. Okay. So without much ado, I'll shoot you my first question. Sure. I've been following you for quite uh, some time now since we first met Goldie. And I was really amazed at the improvements that you've had ever since you started the low carbohydrate therapeutic regimen that I if I assume it correctly you have you've been having it for the past two years. So my first question for you is uh, how in the world did you come across? this low-carbohydrate intermittent fasting lifestyle and what were the significant events that led you to adopt it in your own day-to-day -day life? So it was like more than two years ago, um, my husband passed away from COVID. So after six months about uh, after his passing, I was telling my children that I'm going to go back to the Philippines when I retire. And then my son said, oh, he has a better idea that he wants to. He asked me if we could just sell this house and then buy a farm here. So I asked him, oh, OK, so if you if you want that, are you going to promise me that you're going to be with me forever? And then he told me. Oh, no, I can't promise you because I want to move out to Colorado when I get a job. So, of course, I was devastated. I was already depressed and uh, very lonely. I felt so alone. I said, oh, my goodness, here I am, so obese and nobody would take care of me. So that's when I realized I need to take care of myself. So I've been through a lot of... Um, diets already. I was with Jenny Craig. I was with um, Nutrisystem and other fat diets and then nothing helped. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to do research. I read a lot of books. I listened to podcasts. That's when I came about to know the intermittent fasting accompanied by the low carbohydrate and high protein diet. That's how I knew about it. What year was that, ma'am? What is was it? that? What year was that? That was in September of 2020, to be exact. September of 2020. Because uh -huh. the way I'm looking at you right now, you're, you're slim and you seem to be in proper tipped up shape. And if I may assume right, your body mass index would probably within, would be probably within normal now. Am I correct? Yes. It is. So, so, so at, that, at that time, would you, would you, how, how big were you? You were very obese? Yes, I was morbidly obese. Uh, at the height of 5'2", I was 196.8 pounds, almost to the 200. So can you imagine... I was really so big, so it was so hard for me to move. It uh, like if I walk, I would be uh, short of breath. 
all I have, I have pains in my knees and everywhere on my back. So I said, you know what? Let me just take care of myself. I really need to lose this weight. I am also particularly interested in your own particular experience, ma, because I know you are a registered nurse and you're in the health profession. And it would be a unique perspective on your part if you would be able to share to your to our audience how did you go about doing your LCHF and what were the challenges that you initially have. So the thing is, it's I have many friends who have been doing low carb for quite some time now, and most of them greater majority of them are not from the medical profession. And before I myself did it, like uh, almost two years ago, I've heard of people doing what is the so-called ketogenic diet, which is actually the, the, the almost fad association with a very low-carb therapeutic carbohydrate diet. So that's why I had... Uh, I had some hesitance to adopt it for a couple of years back. So in your case, as a nurse, how did you, how did you uh, adapt yourself to the low-carb lifestyle and what challenges did you encounter along the way? So I started with um, the thing is you really have to control yourself i started it was so hard the first two weeks was really bad i had headaches i sometimes i'd be tempted to eat uh, those food that i really like so i started with um intermittent fasting as the uh, thing really helps you to control your intake so i would uh, instead of eating at eight o'clock I moved my breakfast to like 11 and then finally moved it to two o'clock. And then um, the last meal that I would have would be before six o'clock. So I could eat uh, food choices that I really like and then um, move move with uh, a lot of protein and healthy fats. That's when I was able to really control my weight using those um, guidelines. Mm-hmm. So, which which did you do first, the low carb or the yes. intermittent fasting? Low carb. Uh-huh. Low carb. I think it was together, Doc. Um, it was low carb. And intermittent fasting, I really cut it uh, straight right away because I used to eat before I go to the work. So can you imagine I'd be, I'd be eating like six before six o'clock in the morning? I would eat the regular breakfast. I would have uh, rice. You know how Filipinos are. Uh, breakfast is rice or bread, <laughs> and then together with. Um, anything that was left from the from the dinner, so I would eat that in the morning, and then at twelve I would have oh no I would at ten I would have snacks at twelve I would have lunch, at like four I would have a snacks again, and then when I get home that would be very late, like after eight o'clock then that would be my dinner, so I literally moved all my schedule. I started, as I've mentioned, I started with uh, 10 o'clock breakfast. That would be like a brunch. And then I cut the, the, I cut the breads. I cut the rice. I would exchange it with uh, something healthy. I would have avocados, um, bacon. <laughs> Imagine bacon and avocados and eggs. That would be my brunch. And then uh, for the dinner, I would uh, exchange my rice with either a cassava, um, a banana, the green banana, or 
anything that I could substitute as long as it's a low, uh, low glycemic um, index of those uh, carbs that I'm taking. So at least it's a very, very uh, little portion and then um, high protein plus the, as I've mentioned, always the good fat that we were told to uh, eat. But, uh, but, but you're a nurse, so... Yes. <laughs> but uh, you know how it has been taught to us in, in the medical school, in nursing school, or even way back in high school that fat is not bad for you. Fat is actually, it makes you fat. Eating fat is supposed to make you fat, right? That's how we've been told, right? So That's when, true. So, when you so started, that was, yeah. yes. Well, that was really the... That? I was I was really shocked when I learned about it. I was shocked that we could eat a lot of fat, but those healthy fats. Um, I moved away from using canola oil, I, um, vegetable oil, anything that is not healthy. So I would only use um, olive oil or avocado oil, and then very important the pork fat. I know it's it's not uh, like people would be shocked, but it's really true. The pork fat or the beef fat is very healthy. It could be absorbed in our body and then it helps us uh, do the keto ketosis on our body. So I was I was doing that. I did a lot of research. I read a lot of books. I had um, Metabolical by Dr. Lastig. So it helped me really understand what is going on with uh, these this misconceptions about fat uh, that we need to eat. <laughs> yes. When you, were, when, when you were at that time already metabolically unhealthy because you were obese, did you have any other medical condition? Were you also hypertensive at that time? I was. I was hypertensive. I was really shocked because back then in the Philippines, I never had hypertension. My BP was always normal. It was only like 110 over 60, 110 over 70. When I came here to the States, I was eating a lot. You know, you get the shock of how cheap the food is. And then the chocolates, the hamburgers. So anything we would be eating, eating the, the whole family would go always to um, food that are like, uh, the eat all you can think. So I gained weight. That's when I was, uh, I had developed uh, hypertension. So I didn't know that that was metabolic syndrome already. So my doctor, he's also from the Philippines. He would always tell me, oh, Marigold, you really need to lose weight. You need to lose weight. But I would always say, I would say, no, doc, it's fine. I'm fine. You know, when you get married, you don't, you don't want to take care of yourself anymore. So it's always like, ah, oh, that's fine. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Little did I know that I was really sick already. And then um, my hypertension was would skyrocket, especially when I'm stressed. Oh my goodness, one time uh, I was so stressed, my blood pressure went up to 197 over 107. I, I almost got um, admitted to a hospital, but I said, no, 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 I'd be fine. So they gave me an they gave me an injectable medication just to bring it down. So from that time on, I said, oh my goodness, this is not good. <laughs> Were you and then I was also uh, pre-diabetic. Oh, you're, you, you, got, yes. you already were pre-diabetic by that, by that time? Because the doctor said that the A1C that is 5.9 is a pre-diabetic. So... I said, oh, no, I have to take care of myself. So awesome. now, thank God, after doing this uh, um, low carbohydrate and then intermittent fasting, all my blood works are normal. My mm -hmm. A1C is, thank God, is 5.2. It even went down to 5.2. And then my 
as I mentioned, my hepatic panel was out of whack. I didn't know that that was uh, the fatty liver, the cause yeah. of the fatty liver. Yeah. Your liver so enzymes that, were shooting up? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. It was. And then my doctor oh, was saying, really? oh, maybe you drink a lot of alcohol. I said, no, oh. I don't. Uh-huh. But <laughs> it, it's uh, did did didn't your doctor there know about this thing called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or you know that NAFLD in abbreviated terms? Did I he tell you about that? He does. I oh. think he does uh, know about it, but he never mentioned it to me. He was he was just suspecting that I was drinking alcohol. I said no when I told him. No, I don't drink alcohol. So that's when the, that's the that's the time that he said, "Oh, maybe you have uh, non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver." So yeah. So was your doctor aware of the metabolic syndrome? Because uh, in my not at mind, all. Not at all. Yeah. No. I think doctors here in the <laughs> states are more or less reflections of doctors here in the Philippines. I think it's a worldwide Horror. phenomenon. Many doctors don't. Well, they've heard of the metabolic syndrome. But they really don't know much about it beyond, uh, you know, hearsay and perhaps a, uh, like a one paragraph thing in Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, that book that's uh, edited by Anthony Fauci. You know? So I really, I, I really understand your plight at the time, or less I can relate to what you were experiencing. Through. So weren't you afraid when you started, like you said, you were eating pork fat and Beef, that, beef, meat, and all other animal meats. Weren't you afraid that your hypertension is going to go much higher? Because it's been, that's how doctors have always given it as an advice that you should avoid red meat, uh, avoid uh, fats, because if you do so, then you will be, end up becoming more hypertensive and becoming more unhealthy. So weren't you afraid of getting worse when you started? That high, no. high healthy. No, I was never afraid because I did the research first. I really did the research. So that's when I said, you know what, this research is really uh, proven. And then I could attest it myself because my HDL at that time was very low. It was 40, 40 something. Thing. It was really low. And then when I started the um, high fat, imagine my HDL went up to like how many points? It was more than 60, I think, that it went up. So my triglycerides was okay. And then plus on top of it, my HDL went up. So that was my, I would always ask him about it. Like, why is it my HDL is uh, low? And then what should I do about it? And then he wouldn't say anything. He said, oh, because he would not explain it to me. When I did the research, I knew that the right thing was uh, this uh, diet. Like you increase your, your fat content with the, the healthy fat that they say, then your HDL will also go up. And it's true. When I had a um, test done, I was really shocked. It was it went up right away, and then my uh, triglycerides were okay. Everything was okay. So I suppose you were also essentially doing the same thing that uh, me and a uh, number of of. Uh, uh, people I know who are in the medical profession who stand it. It's like they experimented it on themselves initially. Because me, I was I was really hesitant in adopting it because I'm afraid but that my condition might get worse. I might yeah. end up doing some kind of suicide. <laughs> I, even, yeah, I even thought of it that way. And yeah. in your case for, for how how long how long did you did did you get to to experience the improvement, the gradual improvement. How, how long did you notice those improvements when you started yourself with low carb? I think it was after six months that I really uh, noticed a lot of improvement because my weight 
began to go down. And then, and it wasn't drastic at all, Doc. The thing is, that's why when you see me, I don't have like this one. My my skin doesn't sag. I don't have a lot of wrinkles because I did it. Uh, me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know I did not do it abruptly. I did it little by little. I, I exercised a lot. I would walk a lot. And then from six months then on, I I had a blood test done and it became normal. So I said, this is working. <laughs> this is really working. So that's when I said, I'm going to continue. I'm going to make good to it. So that's uh, like after a year, no, after one year and one month, I eventually went to the weight that I really wanted to be where I want. So I achieved that in one year and one month. Oh, that's, yes. You mean to say... In one year and one month, you went back to your normal weight. Yes, that's quite an that's amazing, ex- amazing, I know. fantastic, fantastic experience. So, yes, you told me that your doctor was not very aware of what the low carb thing is. When, when he when he first knew that you were going on low carb, how did he react to what you were doing? Was he did he advise you? Adversely? Was he against it? He was fine. Actually, he was fine when I told him because he said, oh, if it works for you, then good. Because he was always asking me to lose weight and I could never lose a weight, not even one pound that he was asking me. And then after I came back in six months, I said, oh, what happened to you? Are you sick? I said, no, I'm on a... I'm on a low carb diet and then that's because I I had to do a blood test by then and then he was really shocked that he said oh if that works then go for it so he was he was very very uh, kind to tell me because when he saw the blood test that everything went back to normal he said this really works So how about your relatives and friends? Were they surprised at the experience that you've been going through, that eventually you were slimming down after for, for so long you've been overweight and obese? How did they react to that? Of course, they're so happy. They're very supportive, My, especially my dad. He said... You see, I you, I constantly tell you to lose that weight, lose that weight, but I I wouldn't, I wouldn't like I I would always say, hmm, I'm I so bisaya pa, I can say pasiksihan, like <laughs> like always they would, oh, when you're married, you you don't bother getting sexy or getting fit. It's okay. I'm married. I'm, I'm I have children already. So that was always our perception that when you're married, it's okay to be um, fat, <laughs> things like that. So when he, everyone saw me like uh, change so, so much. So when, like, when you're oh married, you mean, you mean to say when you're <laughs> married, it's okay to be metabolically unhealthy already? <laughs> <laughs> I know, Doc, right? Uh, so because what's your- that's always... I your, know. So it's your, really sad that we always like it's sad that when you get married, you don't want to take care of yourself, and then you don't realize that you're making yourself sick. So this is this is the moral lesson of what I've learned. <laughs> that you really so, have, even if you're married, you have to take care of yourself, eat the right food, exercise. And then be happy of what you ha- you have. So, so what's your motivation now, Goldie, in in maintaining that lifestyle that you started, and now you're you're healthy, you you feel healthy. Now, what's your motivation for continuing with that lifestyle? My greatest motivation is uh, to live a long, healthy life. That's why I said I want to take care of myself. I hope I could 
live as long as I can and then be healthy, be able to um, stay with the kids and then take care of my grandkids. And if and most of all, uh, do what I love, which is farming and gardening. I intend to go back home so that we could establish that farm that we have in the Philippines. And hopefully that's one of my big, biggest uh, goal after retirement. And uh, what, what do you think are the most, perhaps the most significant uh, improvement and benefits you got in a nutshell with your low carbohydrate lifestyle as compared to your previous lifestyle when you were still you know like years back when you were still metabolically unhealthy right? are, are there any improvements in how you're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis what what did you expect? there are a lot yeah. uh -huh. yes Can you name uh, some number of them? one i yes i have a lot of en energy i i get to to do whatever uh, activity I want. I could swim now. I could play tennis again. I could run. I could do skipping ropes. I could, I could really do a lot of things. I could run with my grandkids, bike with them. Before, I wasn't able to do that. So there's a lot of things that have improved after I did my low carb. And number one, I think, is the biggest one is I became healthy. Uh, as I said, all my labs are back to normal. I have not taken the antihypertensive medication for mm -hmm. more than a year. You stopped. That's you have no you have no more. No more. But your no blood more. pressure is maintained within normal levels. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it had my doctor said to stop it because one time I was feeling very dizzy. And when I went to him, my, my blood pressure was really very low. It was 90 over 60. I said, oh, oh, because I was still taking the medication. I didn't know that um, I have to stop it. So when I went back to him, he said, oh, no, you have to stop because your blood pressure is back to normal. So that's the biggest one. And then... As I've mentioned, I was pre-diabetic pre and now my A1C is 5.2, which is quite low already, <laughs> but that's okay. And then, yeah, I think, and, and then most of all, I'm happy. I, I have recovered from depression. I'm taking care of myself. And then I always look forward to like waking up in the morning, enjoying uh, what, the day brings that's uh that's cool yes that's amazing so are you are you sharing your experience with your friends and they ask yes yeah and have have a couple of your friends also tried doing what you're doing try to emulate it yes at uh, first I shared it my, with my family. So my two daughters are now uh, into low carbohydrates. They're also following what I'm doing. And then a lot of my friends would always ask me, how did I do it? When I explained everything to them, a lot of them are doing also uh, following the low carbohydrates and intermittent fasting. So I think I'm... I'm happy that I'm sharing this story because there's a lot of people that have been encouraged because can you imagine a 62 year old, <laughs> 62 year old woman is able to do it. How much more for younger, uh, younger uh, men or women, they could do it. If I could do it, at, uh, I started um, two years ago. So I was 60 at that time. If I could do it, then people younger than me could do it too. <laughs> do you find it uh, challenging from your own personal experience to, to, to maintain that lifestyle, which is for most people quite an unusual lifestyle to be maintaining low carbohydrates? How challenging is it for you or is it easy to do 
Did you find it? Is it? Is it, reply? it is so easy now, Doc. Now that I've learned uh, a lot of things from research, from listening to podcasts, from my experience, it is so easy. That's why I never gained the weight again. Remember when I was um, when I was telling you before, I would have a yo-yo weight because I would stop and then my my weight would gain back. Now I I don't gain at all. <laughs> You're it's what, so easy. You, you mean to say during your previous times that you were trying to go on a diet? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's hard. The it's previous hard. time I was, uh, as I mentioned, I've tried Nutrisystem. So I would do Nutrisystem for six months. And then if I reach my weight, then I would stop. Oh, after like two months, <laughs> here I come again. The weight go- goes up and then it becomes higher than the one that you lost. So it's so difficult. I tried Jenny Craig, the same thing happened. It's not sustainable when you try fat diets, but if you do the natural way, just uh, control your intake with a low carbohydrate, it's so easy to do it. I, you could really maintain it for life. It's like a lifestyle change. So many, many physicians call it the fat diet. Do you agree to that? Do you think it's a fad And What's your take on that based on your experience and also based on the fact that you're a nurse? I don't think so. It's a fad diet because just doing the low carb be, uh, is not a fad at all. We've been educating everyone like to heal their diabetes, to heal their metabolic syndrome. And just stop the sugar, the any content that has sugar on it, because as I mentioned, the sugar is the one that poisons our body. So that's not fat at all. It's uh it's been proven by science that the sugar is the one that's the culprit of us getting fat. It's not the fat per se, but the sugar and the other um, carbohydrate contents that has a lot of sugar in it. So it's not fat at all. I think that's one of the biggest uh, things in in nutritional health that we need to rethink and to perhaps unlearn and relearn. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before we part, Goldie, what, would you, what uh, message would you like to share to our audience with respect to, to your particular experience in adopting your low-carbohydrate lifestyle? And how would you encourage them to also adopt it, adopt it in their, their own way? Yes. So I hope that whoever is watching this uh, episode I want to encourage you to take control of yourself. Um, decide that you want to live a long life and be healthy. So make sure, try the low carbohydrate diet and then uh, increase it with uh, protein uh, and add the healthy fat, as I mentioned. And I know when you take care of yourself, you will be happy, you will live longer, you will uh, have very good relationship with uh, your children because you're healthy, you can take care of them, um, you, they won't bother, they won't be bothered by you getting sick. So that's the motivation. I hope, um, I encourage, I, with my experience, that you get an inspiration uh, to. Uh, follow or to try to learn um, the low carbohydrate, uh, high high protein diet together with the uh, keto, and I hope that uh, through this episode, a lot of people will be encouraged to do the, uh, to try this. Thank you so much. So it was a pleasure talking to you and be part of this 
uh, crusade of Dr. Agkopra. I hope that um, will inspire all of you. Okay. Thank you very much, Goldie. You really shared a lot there. And that would be for the greatest benefit of not just my own patients, but to our audience, to, to my audience in, in my channel. So again, thank you very much. And I wish you the best. Thank you, Doc. Thank you for uh, having me. I hope um, we would be able to uh, teach a lot of patients and then uh, touch their lives too, just as it has touched mine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for watching. Like this video, and if you've learned something important, do share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my Low Carb Health Doctor channel and click that notification bell and be among the first to get updated of my upcoming videos.